Okay, thanks uh, Adriana for the introducing and all. So I think I will take over from now. Okay. Now, uh, early on when I hear serious topic, I actually get very scared for a moment. <laughs> because uh, the topic that I'm going to share today, right, uh, I have to be very honest, it's not a conventional topic. It's not a usual topic that you'll see. Now, uh, okay. I think the slideshow is ready to go. Yeah. So, uh, first of all, I want to thank uh, Pastor Joe for inviting me again. And uh, with this opportunity, I, I felt very uh, glad to be connected with the groups again. Uh. So, uh, today, right, I will be sharing more on the mind over matter, the lens in human. Now, uh, this is a sharing by me. And as you all know, I'm Aaron, but I will introduce myself again another round. Uh, so, let me do the usual talk because I'm a bit nervous here also. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah. This is about me and a little bit about me lah, huh? Okay, so uh, actually later right, we will use uh, slide 2 for questions. I will encourage everyone to ask questions. Uh, you can ask related to the topic, you can ask not related to the topic, I will try my best to answer. Okay, so uh, for slide 2 right, you can actually scan the QR code for the, uh, for the, to access the slide 2 link. And we think you can ask questions anonymously. Okay, so we will encourage you to ask if you have anything because uh, not everyone is so comfortable to stand up and ask questions at times, right? And then, uh, now I, I need to establish an agreement with everyone here. Uh, as usual, my sharing session, I always have this uh, little agreement that I, I need to uh, share with everyone. Now, in this set, sharing session here, right, if you felt any part of it makes sense to you, and you think that, ah, this idea not bad, I like it, please feel free to adopt, take and use. But if those ideas are not too comfortable for you, you felt uh, cannot resonate and all, uh, it's okay. Help me, do me a favor, discard it away. Okay, can everyone agree on that? Okay, yeah, all right. So uh, my profession, uh, as uh, Andrea shared earlier, I'm registered and licensed counselor. So currently I'm in education settings. Uh, uh, so I'm, uh, beside education setting, I'm also uh, a counselor in some of the counseling centers as an associate counsellor. Mm. Now, why do I mention language here, right? Now, because this is my tiny little challenge. Uh, I always felt I'm not too well versed in English. So please bear with me. Uh, I think I am more professional in, since we are all Malaysian, uh, I'm more professional with my English. Yeah. So later, if you heard a lot of la, so, ha, uh, please bear with me. At times, I will, I will be a little bit of stuttering, like, mm, trying to find words in between. Uh. Can help me out also lah. <laughs> okay, so uh, since we are talking about the lens of humor and all, I think uh, just now I, I see everyone, uh, some, some also felt very tired, some felt excited, and uh, I think we don't go into too much detail of science today. I will, I will have some science backup part later, but uh, I think let's start with some, something light lah. Huh? So uh, since I've shared about me, I thought to share a story about my 13 years old self first, okay? So at 13 years old, right, uh, you know that teenage age, uh, all I know is food. So I think I need help here. What is this uh, actually? Yao Cha Kwai. Because once my, uh, there was once my Indian friend asked me, what is this? I said, Yao Cha Kwai. Then his response is, that is your Cantonese name for the Yao Cha Kwai. But he also knows Yao Cha Kwai. He's like, what is the English proper term? Yeah, I said the same thing. Oil fried bowls, oil fried devil. Call coolers. 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 Yeah, I, I felt because growing up as a Chinese and then learn Chinese from young, I uh, learn Mandarin from young. Whenever I want to translate it into English, I find it very difficult. Like chi chong fan or the doji fan. All these things, huh? whenever I want to translate into English context, I find that I, when I explain to a non-Chinese speaker, it sounds very scary for them. Yeah. Why, why do you have uh, mouse noodles? <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll spare the details. Huh? But it's, it's a story about uh, the echo. Okay, it's a story about... Uh, what is this? I almost say Chai Kui Diao. Yao Chai Kui. Okay, it's a, it's a story about Yao Chai Kui. So, um, 13 years old, going to pass away my parents. All I know is food. And then that era, I don't have a phone. So all I ask is, I tell my dad, Dad, I want to buy Yao Cha Kwai. 
because the, the type of pasta we went right is that there are places for people to sit and then uh, there are a lot of food vendors around one. So I begged my father, like, Papa, give me some money. So he gave me a few ringgit, like, okay, I want, I want this, I want that. I don't remember the, the, the food name, like, but I roughly know the shapes, like, that's how I have. So in my mind, right, all I have is Yao Cha Kwai. And I even, uh, so, so filled with the details of Yao Cha Kwai, it's crispy, the color, and then I was imagining how, how am I going to enjoy it. So I walked to the Yao Cha Kwai store. Um, I walked to the Yao Cha Kwai store to get the necessary part, uh, to, to buy the, the things I want. Uh. So I went there, I was so excited. Then this is what I do, you know. I went there, and then I just tapped on auntie. I said, auntie, I want this, this, and this. There were no response, pin drop silence. Then I was like, maybe the auntie didn't hear me. I tapped again, auntie, I want this, this, and this. Still no response, you know. Then this is what I thought. Maybe uh, the auntie are uh, very old. The ear uh, cannot hear me. So what I do, right? I go for a harder tap, you know. Auntie, I want this, this, and this. Eventually, uh, because that place is a lot of Hakka people, uh, that's from Sungai Shua Basa. <laughs> so uh, the auntie turned and shouted at me, you know. And then it's like, shoot, shoot, go away. I was so confused, you know. I was like, why I want to buy food, you ask me to go away. Then for a moment, uh, I felt a tap on my back of the shoulder. It's an uncle. The uncle looked at me, he's like, a boy, ah, you want food, is it? Uncle buy for you. Lah. <laughs> then only I realized that when I put up my eye level, I saw the vendor auntie then standing with the mouth open. Yeah, so it's a very awkward scenario. Actually, the whole thing is I tap on the wrong people to, to, to get Yao Zha Kwai. I tap on the, another customer to ask for Yao Zha. <laughs> yeah. So the auntie also don't know how to respond. The uncle looked at me like one kind. The, the, auntie, the auntie is, of course, not, not very happy. And at that age, all I know is I'm very embarrassed. People thought I'm a beggar. And all I do is cover my face and run. I run back to my father, right? I was crying. And this is what my dad told me. He's like, hey, where's Yao Zha Kwai? I did not order crying, you know? I didn't order tears. Where's Yao Zha Kwai? Yeah, but I explained, but he find it very hard to understand, I think. Uh, maybe parents are hard. And then he, he, he do offer like, uh, let me get you to go buy your job. I said, no, 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 I don't mind. And after that, right, that incident, right, almost a period of time, when I look at your job, I have theory eyes. Yeah, so, although this story sounds a bit sad, uh, but I will share another one, it's my 23 years old story. <laughs> now, even though I say that, I still notice some of you is laughing back then just now. Yeah, but you feel bad to laugh about it, right? But it's okay, it's okay. I, I'm very fine with it. Lah. Okay, now we're 23 years old, over a decade later, yeah. So this is uh, me getting into the world of work already. And this time around, I'm in Singapore. I work in a uh, health pharmaceutical, beauty and pharmaceutical company. And uh, I was a retail assistant store manager. So we were told, right, there are 100, uh, 100 bottle plus of samples that need to be disposed away. This uh, samples, right, is actually this. Anyone recognize what is this? Kino Kimitsu. Mm, I think uh, collagen. Collagen. Sounds like expensive stuff, right? Yeah. So uh, I was very busy and I usually care for people around me. So this is what I tell my colleague. Lah. I have a few colleagues. Uh, they are, they are from China, they are from Filipino. And I was like, you know, take whatever you need. Uh, the, the rest of it, I will tap all back for my family members. So they are very excited like, because 100 plus of uh, samples need to be disposed and then nobody want to take. So they take whatever they want, the rest I will bring back. Like. So that's the deal. So eventually before I bring back, right, uh, I, I have a rough understanding, okay, so this is for the female, this is for the male, right? And then, <coughs> Uh, before I left for work because it's a half day shift, I saw that about 60 to 70 bottles left. You know? So I asked them, I said, you sure you guys only take that little because there's so much left? They said, yeah, yeah. Then I double check and triple check, nobody wants. So eventually I said, I want to tap back for my family members, the rest, because I was living with my brother. And I, I always didn't really show much uh, care for my brother in terms of because I, I felt financially challenged. At this time around, I felt like, you know, I finally have an opportunity to show love to my brother. And I want to do that so much. And my colleague heard my story. 
And this is what my Filipino and uh, China colleague do to me. They actually bring up the plastic bag and help me to pack. And then they help me to carry up because the thing is very heavy. And then I remember my Filipino friend tell me this. He's like, Ayo, I'm so admired by your affection to your family members, your love and care. Please go back and shower them with, with love. So at that time, I didn't think that much. No? And for me to carry all these things, uh, the whole sample back for my, for my brother, is about an hour plus of train journey. So I didn't think much. Uh, no? I just want to bring back to my brother. And going back to home, and uh, I told my brother, hey, and he's like, OK, you just put two bottles on the dining table. I will start drinking tomorrow. He, he, he sort of like take it in, uh, he had accept this younger brother here showing care to him. Uh. And I went to bath and uh, I was so happy because I did something for my brother. And it's actually a different thing. Yeah, it's actually a different thing. So I noticed some of you realize something is off already. Uh, some of you is like, okay, so what's on? Uh? Never mind, I'll tell you the story of my bath. So after I bath, right, my brother is like very confused. He take a bottle and it's like, Everyone, come here, come here. Can you read the description on the back? Uh? I was like, nothing wrong, uh, Kong. It's all herbs and it's all herbs and uh, herbs and minerals. I think this is good for your body. But do you notice the name is called Matcha Man? Uh? <laughs> I was like, Matcha Man for men? Uh? Why do you question me? It's blue color. Nothing wrong. So. Like I said, my English is not good. I, I always felt I, I, I do felt my English is not good. I'm I but I'm always in a learning process and this is what I tell myself nowadays. So he opened up the internet and he showed me the description of this thing. I read and read I read and I find nothing wrong except there was this word called uh, it is for libido use. <laughs> uh, so I, I, I don't know how to explain libido. Some is laughing, some is not laughing yet. But libido is actually something like a... Sexual. sexual. Yeah, yeah, it's actually for, for sexual desire one. So, <laughs> the situation, again, this is another awkward situation happens to me now. <laughs> and then only I realized, my Filipino, my Filipino friend tell me, go back and shower your brother with love. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> this is not the love I expect, no. <laughs> So, I just realized that I got pranked by my brother. Huh? No, that's why my brother also rose me after that. Very good question. What happened to my brother that night? My brother, he is, he is, he felt very funny and he, he got a little bit annoyed also. Then he's like, Aaron, can you be more careful next time? I was like, what if uh, tomorrow morning uh, I bring this and how am I going to take train? It's like, MC law. Then, because he got two kids ready, then another question he asked me is, you think I don't have enough kids? Ah? <laughs> I was like, I have no intention, brother. I love you. I love you as my brother. So eventually, I, I, I do not know how to get away from the scenario. Lah. So this is what I do. Lah. I tell my brother, I was like, Go, all these bottles, ah, actually, I bring back not for you. Lah. Then for who? I was like, uh, you know, you got plants outside the balcony area. <laughs> I think ah, the plants is dying. Ah. They needed the minerals. I said, of course, lah, she disagreed to that. Lah. And yeah, it's very awkward. And for a moment after that, I, I keep on telling myself, I tell my brother, it's okay. We see it the other way around. I just do a full workout coming back home by carrying the thing. Because that thing weighed about 6 kg. Wow. Yeah. So I think the first, first story I shared and the second story I shared are. Uh, I, I want to ask everyone here first, what is the difference over the decade? Mm. Okay, so actually, as, as uh, I think as everyone would notice is, the, the first time round maybe is, I still haven't really learned how to uh, see things in a different perspective. I still didn't learn how to be humorous. Humorous is actually an approach that we can learn. So it takes me 10 years down the road to learn. Okay? And uh, of course, the first one is more sad because when, when that stress comes in, I just do not know how to handle. All I do is run away, fly. But the second round, when I faced a similar stress that put me in a very awkward position, 
I learned to adapt and play along with it. Yeah, of course, uh, the second day when I go back to office, I didn't scold my colleague at all. Uh. <laughs> all we do in the workplace eventually is we have a little bit of sarcasm and humor after that. Uh, uh, where, you know, when I see my Filipino colleague, because she's also married, then I start to ask her, I think your husband did this product uh, for some usage. Yeah, but this is how we can bond also with people. So, uh, as I shared earlier, sarcasm and humor. So, uh, do you notice that actually sarcasm and humor take place in both settings? Yeah, just that one is healthier, one is less healthier. Uh, what do I mean by that, right? It's because when sometimes people uh, they, they make fun of others, right? Some people, when they cannot take it in, right? Then it is something that is very hurtful, then that is a very bad sarcasm. But a good sarcasm, right, is usually like how I described myself earlier, I felt, where I use myself as an example, and I share it with everyone here, and everyone can relate and, and laugh one. So sarcasm, is, that is how it works. Uh -huh. Okay, so I'll move on a bit is, actually I do thought to hear from everyone here as well. Uh, do you think it is possible to balance humor uh, with professionalism within the workplace? Huh? Is it something that is able to take part? Mm, mm. Because I heard that some workplace, they are very strict. They would sort of like, um, don't allow people to make funds and all. Yeah, I believe in some settings, they would need someone to be very serious. Huh? Uh, but in some settings, I think to have a little bit of humor, to have a little bit of laughter, it actually helps to ease the tension. So uh, the next question is pretty much the same. So I think from what I see uh, in everybody's response here, the hit notes and all, I believe everyone do experience a little bit of uh, laughter from time to time. Am I correct? Within the office, I think, mm, with your colleagues, with your director, or not? Can I say the word director? Uh, sometimes some director, I know, <laughs> the relationship is a bit different. Okay. But uh, actually, this uh, humor approach, right? When I want to share about this topic, I also a bit concerned because I know that this is not a conventional topic, and not everyone can relate to it. Not to say not cannot relate. Uh, just how do I put it? Yeah. Uh, it is very subjective. It is actually an art, uh, a very art thing. So what I would like to share with everyone here, right, is actually this thing can be learned can be practiced, just that it's okay to make mistakes. And sometimes, through learning and all, right, then we sort of like able to master the skill over the time. Now I'll share more into details as in how we can learn, uh, learn the perception. Uh, that there's a word for it, uh, but I will share about that part later. Okay, I think I'm now a bit nervous also, uh, so I'll share with everyone. So, uh, sometimes humor comes in words, sometimes the humor actually comes in more of an object thing. So I think some of you may have seen something like this previously in the internet. Yeah, it's like an earthquake detection kit. Okay, so how it actually works yeah, is when earthquake, it will shake like this. Yeah. But yeah, so everyone will find something funny, but sometimes some people will find something not funny. So that is very normal. But the, the most important part, right, is can you enjoy in the process? Because when you are able to take in the humor, uh, when you allow the humor to take place, right, it actually will helps you to be less stressful, helps you to ease the tension. Okay, so now I'm gonna share about the benefit of uh, having a humorous end. Uh, okay, so uh, I will start off with the first one is actually when we have a humorous approach within us, right, it actually helps us to connect with people. It actually helps us to to uh, people may find us easier to relate and maybe more friendly and all. And sometimes some of the jokes or some of the humor thing that we share with people, right? People can connect more with you and people remember you more. So it's a very important aspect in the workplace as well. Okay? So the next to it, right, is I think uh, when you see photograph is uh, uh, the thing that I wish to relate here is actually the memories. Uh, when the things is funnier, it usually it creates a lot of emotions within. So just like just now I share about there's two story. One is the first one is I'm very sad. That actually creates a very strong emotion within me as well. 
So that's why I remember up until today. Yeah. But same goes to happy things. If you can create a lot of meaningful and happy events, some inside jokes. I believe within the family members, sometimes they have jokes that, you know, uh, even the siblings goes up to 50, 60 years old, they are still able to recall, they are still able to laugh at it. Right? Yeah, I see the hit dots. Yes. So that's why humor is one of the way to save down good memories, especially with people. Uh, with people, with the places. Of course, I think everyone is aware, when you laugh, basically the tension is gone. That's why sometimes in the office, uh, my boss always tell me, Aaron, stop joking. We cannot focus. We cannot, we cannot move on like that. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I'm, I'm actually a very playful person. Uh, so sometimes I'm also learning on this end. Yeah. So uh, the next, right, uh, earlier the three I shared is more on the psychological end. Uh, there are also physical benefit. So what is more on the physical benefit? Oh, sorry, wrong. Okay. So why 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 do you notice a tiger bun here, right? It's because the, the word I want to search for is pain relief. But maybe my recent search engine, uh, I search a lot of ointment and all, so it, it bumps up to be a tiger bun. Uh. But I think tiger bun is something that everyone can relate. Uh, I believe everyone has seen one. Yeah. So humor at times is also helpful for pain relief. Now there are medical research that shows that. But besides that, I think that the immediate thing that we can relate here is on the mental side, mental health side. When we have laughter, when we have a little bit of joyful, basically, uh, you can't be happy and sad at the same time. Mm. So it's a pain relief for the emotional side as well. Okay. So, uh, of course, laughter also improves your, your breathing. Because when you laugh, actually it is like a diaphragm exercise. It's like a diaphragm exercise, so uh, it actually increases your heart rate and all, so it's good for your heart. And of course, it also improves the immunity. Now, why this, right, is because when you have a lot of humorous things going on, right, some people may be very excited, cannot sleep. I think that is the, that is the side effect of it. But some people, because of the humor day in and day out, right, it helps them to be relaxed. They are able to sleep better. Now. To talk about the concept of reframing, uh, I wish to keep it very simple for everyone so that everyone can sort of like adapt and relate after that. So what do you need to know, right? Actually, when I talk about reframing, it's actually like the lens of humor, okay? So the reframing itself, right, is uh, I want you to imagine when you take selfie, you wouldn't just take at a fixed angle. From time to time, you will see people take multiple shots. Lah, huh? Yeah, so what I want to bring up here, right, is Please remember, we can see things from a different perspective. There is always another way to see things. And there are sometimes a funny angle to see things. Okay? So, uh, of course, we need to be clear what is going on within our mind. Is it a fact or is it an assumption? Now, we always tell ourselves story. And when we tell ourselves enough times, right, we believe that it is a fact. So it is important to do a fact check. It is important to do uh, to ask ourselves: Is it an assumption? Because sometimes some of the thoughts within us, right, is not helping us to move forward. It will get us stuck. So, uh, which leads me to the third point: We need to stand up on our mind, of our own mind. So the whole point here, right, is uh, like just now I said, we will we will get stuck. <coughs> so we will get stuck in a sense. We are thinking: How can we look at things at a different perspective? So from this how, right, H-O-W, I would like to invite everyone to think another way around, is you move the W to the front, which is the who. It becomes who. From how, it becomes a who. So the, the point about who, right, is you can actually approach people to ask from their perspective. It may actually expand how we see things, okay? So stack up, uh, you stand out of your mind, right, uh, the whole point here, uh, another thing is also we can we can act as a filter within our brain. We can we can take in different different information, but we pick up whatever that is more truthful, uh, more or more of a fact base to help us to move on better. Okay. Right. Okay. So. Uh, okay. Even though in different different scenario, right, be it in the workplace or on the road, actually when we allow ourselves to see things from a different perspective, 
it will help us to cook way better. So for example, like this one, I believe it's a driver grabbing watermelons. So when the watermelon crash, I think he had the idea, okay, don't waste food. So he started to eat that. So that is one of the ways to cook also. So, hey, oh, they are off the TV? Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, car accidents and all. I always see people take pictures of the car accident. But in social media, I think we have seen many scenarios like that also. They, they will post up about their experience. They will make fun about themselves. But if we were to look at it in a different way, right? They are actually using humor to cope with the stress. Okay? So when we are able to change our story, we are able to change our approach, and it actually will bring laughter to the people around as well. So this is how, when we practice humor enough within us, it will affect people around. Okay, so uh, the last part is quite similar. This is a different scenario. Yeah. So for these old couples, when they have a car crash accident, uh, they topple in sideways. When the husband managed to climb up, then they take picture in this way to remember it. I think if this kind of picture passed down in the families, the family will remember the story as well. That's why it is a very important memory. And how do they look like over there? Do they look, do that, do they look sad? No. Most of the time, they, they feel like enjoy or happy, having a happy face. So this helps the memory to flow. Okay. So be in a, be in a war zone and and uh, whatever stressful scenario. Right? There are people that use this kind of technique to cope. Mm. So if you go back to the histories and all, uh, even in war zone time, the soldiers also make joke because they they need something to lighten their day. They need something to carry their spirit forward. Uh, so even. I read, I think one of the book by Victor Frank, within the Nazi camp, uh, the Holocaust camp site, the, the, survive, uh, the, the one that is caught and put there, they also have joke daily in and out to help them to cope better. All right? So the conclusion I, I wish to bring up to everyone here today, right, is actually this. Now, the matters, right, is something that we cannot control. Just like the bright sun daylight, okay? Just like the bright sun. But what we can do, right, from time to time, is have a lens to cover us. So it's like a, a sunglasses and all. So that lens, right, I'm trying to refer as a humorous lens. So having a humorous lens is necessary at times, but please bear in mind, don't use uh, sunglasses with too, uh, too black because if you are blinded by the humor, that is another problem. All right, so I think that's all for my sharing today. And uh, on the last part of the uh, on the last part, I would invite everyone to scan the QR code to give me a very uh, short and easy feedback, uh, if possible. All right, thank you. Thanks, Aaron. Uh, very interesting topic. Um, so I think. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I think you you talk about. You know, you can be easily being funny, right? Humans about being funny, right? Mm. What if, let's say, I'm a very serious person and then I'm like a one-word kind of person. How can I start to be funny? Because yeah. sometimes some funny people may be like dry jokes, like, you know, it's not. Yes, yes. <laughs> it becomes like a cool gag at times. People will refer to that. Uh, but I think funny context, right? Uh, it may not be able to fit in every scenario. So it depends on... It depends on the circumstances and all, but uh, one thing I learned about conversations, right? Like just now you say some people are the one one word response individual, is if you want to build an interesting conversation with people, we must first be interested in them. So usually I will ask about ask about their their experience or ask about uh, their day, their background and all. From there, maybe I will pick up some of the things. And if the individual is more open, then I will try a little bit of a humorous approach in in the conversation with the individual as well. Yeah. So I, I, I can't say like I, I go with everyone, I, I immediately be funny because sometimes uh, I have to be very sensitive with people. Yeah. But I, I think one thing I can share is if we make enough mistake in this kind of conversation, right, we eventually will definitely pick up. We will know how to handle it. Okay, um, so I think I want to remind you guys that you can actually uh, log on to Slido uh, and then you can see there's three questions there but I think I'll keep it going first then I'll go to Slido, yeah? So another question I think in the context of uh, workplace, right? Um, mm. I think some of us have also gotten our bonus letter uh, 
probably some promotion letter. But what if, let's say, like I'm a line manager, and then I need to deliver a underperform uh, candidate, like you know my downline. You know how 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 can I manage this situation? Because obviously it's very negative, right? Like I can't say, uh, hey, you know you didn't perform well, and then this is your bonus payout, and your increment is this much. Yeah. So how do I put the human lens in this context? Human lens, I think, uh, sometimes human lens, right, it usually refers to something positive also. So we can actually focus on what the individual do good, right? And uh, very subjective, but we can lean in that sense on, on their good sides and help them to feel better. Mm. Yeah, so uh, it's more of focusing on the good side, which is the gain and if we are able to help the individual to sink in more and more over time, right, it will help them to handle the emotions better as well. Okay, okay. But what if, let's say, um, you want to fire this guy, you know, how, how do you then put that lens there? <laughs> I think this is very challenging. I would like to learn, uh, I, would, I would like to learn from someone if they are managed to do that as well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Because sometimes like all these evaluation can be very tricky, um, especially when they have very high hopes that they did well. Mm. Then you're like, you know, why 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 you give me this uh, you know bonus and so forth, yeah. Okay, so I think we have a good list of questions here. Um the first one that I will take on is is there any types of humor which a company should not encourage? So we give example like dirty jokes, re racial jokes, religious jokes, yeah, any type of humor. <coughs> Uh, I think from my understanding, this is very much depending on the work setting, their work culture. Some companies, they are quite open to accept uh, a little bit of sarcasm, but it will also depend on, on uh, how the individual responds first. Because if it's hurtful for someone, right, I think the company will start to consider. But usually, from what I see, uh, like if let's say some of the jokes mentioned earlier, it's like racial jokes, a religious jokes or a gender related jokes i think these are very much discouraged right? because this is not acceptable in the public sphere so would you say a bit more like a light-hearted kind rather than a more yes yes yeah. so okay. usually i see uh, most of the time about jokes right it could be storytelling so for example a manager they have some experience in the audit and uh, something very silly happened and usually they bring up and retell the stories right the whole company, the, the whole team of the people can relate and laugh about it. Or maybe at times it's uh, generally one because I believe everyone serve uh, Facebook social media. Uh, so when they came across some memes, they came across something that is very funny, maybe in the, it relates to the society uh, kind of news and issues. Everybody will have a good laugh together. Uh, so actually that will help the group more. Okay, Ken. Um, okay. Then there's this question, uh, when was the last time you get offended by someone's humour? What was the content? Uh, wow, this one. <laughs> okay, I, I can share this. Lah. Okay, So, uh, since I'm a counsellor and I work a lot on interventionists, uh, I've been helping a lot with, uh, I've been working a lot and helping a lot with uh, sexual harassment victims. So there was once, right, my peer counsellor starts to refer me as SHE. So in my mind, I cannot relate, you know. The first thing I relate is the Taiwan, the Taiwan girl band, SHE. And oh, when I think about that band, I was like, oh, this sounds like a good thing, but I still cannot relate. And then I was like, does my peer colleagues refer me as, a, as a someone who support the female individual, that's why I call SHE. But after that, right, only I learned, they are referring me as sexual harassment expert. So. When I first heard that, I was like, oh my god, I am so uncomfortable. But slowly over time, right, when, uh, when I also accept it as it is, lah, then I'm able to move on more. So the first time when I heard that joke is, I, I don't feel funny, I feel offended also. I was like, why call me sexual harassment expert? It sounds like I'm the harasser somewhere. <laughs> yeah, but then when, when, when everyone look at a serious context, they're like, okay, we really have to ask everyone about this. I was like, okay, then I slowly take it as a, what you call that? Uh, uh, accomplishment, yeah. So it take me a while to switch on the lens. Then, then just to also follow up on this whole sexual harassment, right? Um, mm. would that would 
different culture influence um, your perception of you know being funny. So for example, right, like uh, if you work in a very big company like MNC, you have a mix of people coming in, right? You have like maybe places like the UK, the Dutch, and then you have of course like the Asians, like your China or your India, where they have different ways of thinking. Mm. Yeah. So how how do you then um, put into that lens of like um, maybe to them is not even a sarcasm. To them could be just a humor. Yeah. So how how do you manage that then? Because then you mentioned sexual harassment in your context was okay, right? But then maybe that person is like, yeah, I mean, it's fine. Hmm. I think what we can do when we mix with the different group of people is we can first observe uh, and actually that there, there, there uh, I think clarification is also necessary. So I, I remember last time I mixed with a different group of people. Uh, there are actually some overseas students, Indonesians. They they have their inside jokes as well. Uh, and okay, I, I don't think this is appropriate to bring up here. Uh, but to me, when I first hear about it, I felt very uncomfortable. But when I ask and approach this group of students more, right, when I know more about their context and where they live and how do they discuss about this topic, then slowly I, I know that it's normal for them. I can have the acceptance as well. Because like just now I asked, uh, I, I, I share uh, where we can see things on different perspectives, it actually stretches our acceptance. Uh, so the humor lens is the same. When we're able to see it as a human, we are actually taking the things in a much lighter manner. But when we have to be serious, we have to be serious uh, uh, to come back to that. Okay, I think this question will be quite relevant. Uh, will people take our opinion lightly if we put it in a humor uh, in our conversation too often? Um, it, it will affect, I, I felt like this is from my personal experience. I cannot say for everyone. Uh, from time to time, sometimes I joke a lot, right? Uh, some of the time with some individuals, they will take my things lightly. Uh, so, I think this is where I learned from experience also. So after that, I, I sort of like readjust with, my, well, with some of my peers and all, is when I need to be serious, I'm telling them, I said, I'm being serious with you. So I'm not in the joking sense and all. So sometimes they, 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 they find it hard to distinguish also, like, am I just being the funny side of me or am I being serious? So, yeah. so when, when we joke too much, people will misunderstood us also. True. Then maybe this follow-up will be quite interesting. Um, how do we tell that the other person when his joke is offensive or degrading? Sorry, come again. How do we tell uh, whether that person's joke is offensive or degrading? Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, because I think this is... Uh, sometimes when we talk about sarcasm, right, it is about like passive-aggressive. The, the word itself looks normal, but sometimes there's a hidden message within but it, it, again this depends on how do we want to take it in if we want to take up from the surface word by word only if it doesn't affect us then it's fine but sometimes some individual they are more sensitive one they will look deeper within right they will find it very offensive and all so it's very hard to distinguish unless we ask clearly from from the one who shared uh, what is their intention within the message? Mm. So that's why it comes back to we have to clarify sometimes. Mm. Okay, okay. Uh, uh, let me see what else. Okay. Um, okay, maybe just going back a little bit on uh, the workplace, right? Because I think it's very common that uh, when you work too long, um, you get a bit stressed out. Because I think mm. your, your, your key content was on being stressed out or being burned out. How do you identify that, right? So let's say, for example, I have a colleague that um, I sense that she's feeling very burnt out, right? Uh, how do I reframe her thinking? Yeah. So sometimes the person, like, you know, they've been doing so many things, but they do not realize that they're actually tired or, like, you know, they're just fed up of things, right? But you can see, like, the frustration on her face, right? So how, how do I reframe that? Because I think you, you talk about reframing the situation so mm. that you don't put yourself into that situation for too long. Yeah. Mm, mm. So, uh, Adriana, correct me if I'm wrong, you, you mean to say like, how can we help them to reframe right in the process? Uh, okay, this may leave the humor lens aside first because usually sometimes when people are very stressed, right, very hard to go in with a humor lens. I will, I will remind this again, because humor lens works more on the personal context. Huh? 
when we learn to do more on personal context, then only reach out to others with that. But in general, how can we help out someone who is stressful? Uh, it's very hard to tell someone very directly, hey, you are stressed. I think most of the time, people will deny. So what we can do, right, is uh, we need to check our voice tone, how we approach the individual. The softer, the better. But one of the things I learned is uh, we can actually ask permission first, hey, would you mind if I share from my point of view? Yeah. So that actually helps the individual to soften the, uh, how do I say, soften the defensiveness. Yeah. And they are more prepared that you are about to share them your point of view. So they won't take things more personal. Mm. I guess in your con when, you, when you mentioned about that, it's about balancing between whether it's humour or being a bit more like softer approach, depending mm. on the situation. Depending on the situation. Because it can't be happy, happy all the time, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, Kent. Um, okay, so I think this is quite interesting. How did you learn to change your bad situation into funny situation? Okay. Uh, how do I learn to change my bad situation into a funny situation? Uh, I think, I think from, from my personal experience, uh, mm. it is, uh, I personally love to play with words. So I will use one recent example I have with my wife. Uh. My wife is there. <laughs> Okay, I'll share this part. Uh, okay. uh, so recently we are very busy and she forgotten to wash the rice cooker. And to me, I felt like, oh, you make a mistake. But then I didn't really point her out. Like, I was like, okay, I have the understanding, you know. Uh, we all have a busy schedule and all, and it happens. So one of the day, right, in the morning, uh, I remember it's somewhere 9.55 or 58, I received a message. You also forgot to wash the rice cooker. I think that comes in, uh, a, lot of, a lot of us will have the red alert, okay, I'm about to get school, you know? But how do I play around with it, right? Is I realize, hey, we're actually both making the same mistakes. Perhaps this is what God planned for us, uh, to make us a pair, to be a couple, to be a husband and wife. So eventually I tell her, I said, you know, we are, cusp we are actually husband and wife, and I think the rice cooker just announced that again. Yeah. So, that is how we can turn things around. But I don't mean to say to to not do uh to not uh to use this to escape from the serious manner. Uh, it's very bad if you use that too often. But some of the time we can create a little bit of light-hearted approach to things. We can laugh together on our mistake and it actually helps us to grow together as well. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, what are the popular advice and tips uh, that you give your clients uh, to help your clients? What are the popular advice and tips that you give to help your clients? Wow, this one I very hard to think. Oh. Really. <laughs> but uh, hmm. maybe one example. Yeah. Depends on context, of, because every client I might say different things. But I okay when I think back, right? I, I hardly advise client now. But I do not know. I th okay. I think I think now I can relate more. Is uh, my client will always ask me for reading materials because I am more science back like, from time to time. So uh, I think if it relates to the advice end, is always go back to the science. Everything have a science explanation. Your emotion also have a science explanation. Uh, so there are definitely research and all. Uh, if we're talking about religious, the Bible itself is a very good research really. There were many information that can help, can be very helpful. But coming to today's era, if you want to use science to relate, there are professionals that do research on the area. Just don't read things from, how do I say? Just don't read things from social media and all, but refer to a proper research. It will help you out more. Okay, okay. Um, before I go through this, because I think we have quite a number of uh, slido questions. Yeah. Anybody on the floor want to ask it? Yeah, no, I mean like openly when you talk on the mic. Anybody? If not, then I'll just continue slido, anonymous. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, okay. So I think this person mentioned about when is the wrong time to have humor uh, at a wedding. Everyone asks when's your turn, but cannot ask the same question at a funeral. So it's more of like when is the wrong time to have humor. When is the wrong time to have humor? I think uh, this is quite subjective, eh? but I, from my experience, uh, is I think the thing is funny. I mention out to the crowd, and then nobody laugh. And then I suddenly have the very cold feeling within myself. So I think that is the sign that I, I, I slowly pick up. 
that um, not all jokes works with everyone. Um, so, you know, since his profession is a bit on counselling, right? And then I got last one question, one last five minutes. Um, okay, so I think how can we support individuals uh, with, let's say, a mental health challenge? Um, you know, how do we support them, you know, with a bit more humour in this case? Oh, I think we have a question there. Yeah. Yeah, you, you can ask first. Um, I don't know whether you've heard of... Um, this therapy where they encourage people to wake up in the morning, stand in front of the mirror, and laugh out loud. What do you say about doing something like that? I mean, you, you've talked about the benefits of humour. Mm. Um, nothing funny about looking at myself in the mirror and the first thing in the morning. <laughs> it's quite, quite horrific, probably. Um, but what, do you think that is a really, is that a good option? Is that something that we could adopt? Yeah, I think that is a very interesting question. I really love that. Uh, I heard about a similar approach like that. They, are called, they call it the laughing exercise and all. It's very hard to, uh, how do I say that? It's very hard to do uh, initially. I think I tried this during my diploma degree time also. It is very awkward. But I think because if a whole group of us is laughing at each other's awkward, right? Eventually we get into it. Yeah. So uh, a lot of times this kind of approach, uh, it may sound very uh, alien to us, but it actually works well. Just that we need to find someone that is able to do it properly uh, to, to request for guidance. Uh. So I think I'll refer back, I'll, I'll link back to just now I shared. We will often start at the how, H-O-W. We need to find the who to sort of guide us. And when we have the proper guidance, then maybe we can slowly adapt into the method. So it's fine. Yeah, it's Hi. Um, I just got a general question. Uh, since we're all here, we're all Malaysian or Asian. I, I realize that Asian are, are very different in the sense that they are very uh, hurting, very easily hurting, put it this way. Especially when somebody wants to comment about our ancient Asian culture, sometimes our culture looks very strange to people, right? What we do, what we believe. But when we talk about it, sometimes people just don't like to hear it, or people feel offended to hear it, put it this way, right? But then when, it, when a comedian talks about the same subject, mm. it is so acceptable, and they celebrate the message. Mm. Sometimes it amazes me, I wish I'm a comedian, you know. Yeah, life is so wonderful, because you get to speak everything you want to say, and everybody accepts it, and everybody pays money to watch you. Yes. I think I wish I'm a comedian. Thank you. I think, I think the comedian part is, is a very interesting uh, point of view to look at this. Yeah, you see, comedian, right, they always uh, touch on sensitive topics and everybody will laugh together at it. And I think, I think the top up from there right, is instead of war, right, if we have a comedian, uh, if we have a joke as war, right, it will be so much better. Yeah, because, uh, but to, to look at the audience, right, I think they are more prepped in the sense that it is a comedy show, they are psychologically more prepared. Mm -hmm. And whenever they are uh, touch on them, even on a personal context, they will laugh out loud. And it uh, actually laughing, right, it will influence one another one. When I see someone laugh, I tend to follow. Because we are somehow connected in in the verbal and non-verbal ways. Mm. But very interesting point about the comedy comedian side. One more question. Uh, this just reminds me of something. Uh, last year, right, around May, uh, Crack House Comedy Club, Tamantun, right, was charged. This lady was charged for blasphemy. She was insulting Islam. But she went out in the front, three minutes, she took off her scarf and mm. said, something like that. So, um, 
I think Malaysia is more like we have to be very careful about hoodoo stuff. And yeah. So sometimes I find it quite difficult. <laughs> yeah, I need to be careful of these things. Yeah. Because later on, after that, there was legal, all sort of legal action came. The crack house comedy club was closed mm -hmm. and she was sued. Was almost sent to jail. So yeah. I wasn't sure was that uh, was that broadcasted live or, or the what's called it, the audience uh, share the experience externally. So that's why I, I, I always uh, I think humor said this is the thing uh, that there are both sides of the coins. Uh, there are always times that people find it relatable and funny. There are always times that uh, people felt very offended by it. I think one of the comedians I I know because uh, <coughs> Uh, I was introduced to uh, I was introduced and learned about this uh, comedian called Russell Peter. Mm -hmm. He made a lot of uh, racial jokes. One mm -hmm. that time, uh, I'm trying to learn English in my form five years, and my Indian teacher introduced me this English. I thought it's a good presenter, but then I realized it's all racial jokes. But uh, why do I link back to this one? Right? Is because even him, I remember one of the sharing. He also said. Uh, Sometimes people really got offended and stand up and how do I say it, uh, reacted like, over the stage of so. Uh, in one of the sharing, he shared that one. So I felt even watching comedy, right? They also, uh, mo I believe most of the comedian they face that. Hmm. Okay, okay. I think that wraps up the um, the Q and A session. So I think thank you so much, Aaron, for for coming back again to Water. I think your sharing of humor and sarcasm really gives us a different perspective. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.